As a child of the 80s growing up in the 90s and being a huge football fan, it was difficult to avoid the influence of Italian football in particular, with World Cup in Italy in 1990, the kits, the players, the haircuts, Football Italia screened on the UK every Sunday and Channel 4. The influence was huge and so come along with my best pal who were friends through football, his wife and another friend of ours for a weekend away in Italy to come and check out some Italian football for ourselves. We're starting off with Inter Milan versus Lazio at the famous San Siro Stadium in Syria A before going to check out Como FC in Syria B against Palmero. Club are in an interesting time. They have some big name people on the board like Thierry Henry and Cesc Fabregas is also a part owner and player. So yeah, a bit of a football feast away in Italy. Good morning from Lierna train station here just by Lake Como. We're heading from Lierna to Milan Central and from there getting um, a couple of metros to the San Siro Stadium to watch Inter Milan take on Lazio in Serie A this afternoon, 12.30 kickoff. Both teams currently fighting for the Champions League places for next year while Inter Milan are in the semi-final of this year's competition set to take on AC Milan the city rivals in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so we're hoping for a great game, a fantastic atmosphere, and looking forward to checking out a new stadium. On our way to the big game, what are you looking forward to about the match? Um, I'll say go to the stadium because it's an iconic stadium and you know it's what everybody wants to go and visit. Um, and it's like one of the big boxes that I can took off and it's the first time for me to go to a football match before so that would be an amazing experience. And seeing big team like Inter Milan, you know, and seeing big players as well. Who are you looking forward to watching? Who should we be looking out for? I would say um, Martinez for Inter Milan with Argentina. So I think he's just won the World Cup with Argentina. Um, he's good, he's good at scoring goals, but he's more like a team player. So he, he flows with the team just more than just shooting, he's passing about. Um, and for Lazio team, um, it's a time striker called Immobile. Um, he's quite old, I think he's 32, but he's scored quite a lot of goals. He's quick, he's tall. And he's a, I think he's their captain as well, so I think both of them will be one to watch. So we've got a World Cup winning striker versus a European Cup winning striker. Ah oh, yeah, it would be just about comparison, you know, how they play differently and if they're going to score today, great. Um, but I had a feeling though, Martinez would be better off, like so getting man playing at home. And they're on the good form, you know, so they, they're in the Champions League semi-final. Um, so I think they've got a bit more drive in the team and with the fans backing them up, I think Inter Milan would just manage to beat Lazio. They're both on the top of the table as well, so that'd be a good game to watch. So money on the table, what's your score prediction going to be? I'll say 3-1. What's your score prediction for the game? 2-1. Um, 2 Milan. Okay. 
Today is a crucial game uh, following yesterday's result. Uh, I think it's paramount uh, that we take the three points. Otherwise, considering what games we got left, uh, we're pretty much out of Champions League next year. Unless the impossible happens uh, since from now till June. But I don't see many chances of that happening. So yeah, today is paramount. Of course, because uh, Lazio now is second position. We are fifth. Five, then uh, we hope to win and uh, so uh, the best way should be win winning the Champions League in semi-final against Mil Milan and in the final with Real Madrid or Manchester City but uh, to avoid it surprises uh, we have to win today just, just for me it's the first time I at San Zero so it's a uh, for uh, for me it's an emotion uh, I, I can't um, I can explain the emotion for uh, for being here for the first time. There is like a brotherhood between the two teams uh, that uh, last for 30 years more or less, and uh, is uh, is like a, not like a friendly match. It's very important as a match, but we have a good uh, relationship with the, the other team. On our side. Well, we hope Lukaku will replicate his performance against Tempoli. Barella on a good day is always a massive threat. And yeah, I don't have high faith and hopes in Correa's performance, guys. So I think if Chalanoglu is on a good day as well, him and Lukaku can really make a difference here. Barella, always Barella. A young player, very beautiful player. It's always a pleasure to see him. Maybe Lautaro. Lautaro, but Lukaku more because Lukaku, I saw him last game and he was very good. But I think that for SS Lazio, Immobile is playing. Maybe Immobile. This is the day that uh, could uh, uh, maybe uh, change uh, his season. I'm, I'm scared a little bit of Milinkovic Savic, but I hope uh, this this game uh, we we will win. Inter is very very strong as a team, but maybe tonight we could have a good surprise. I hope so. Tu no sai quanto ti amo. Tu sei fatto di Milano. Quello se ma sopra il cuore rappresenta il primo amore. Te l'ho giurato da bambino. Per sempre ti sarò vicino, a te e salta ovunque andiamo, c'è la alla curva la nord di Milano. During the game itself, Lazio went 1-0 in front thanks to Felipe Anderson goal in the 30th minute. Inter thought that they equalised shortly afterwards through Henrik Mkhitaryan only for VAR to rule out the goal, meaning Lazio took in a 1-0 lead at the break. So what's your half-time analysis then, Thomas? Uh, I think the football is a bit slow. I, I think like what Chase has just said, the pass is a bit slow, it should be quicker, be efficient. Um, it's about a better, setup, a better team. But Lazio, they were quick, you know, when they have the front, they were trying to be quick with one, two passes, and they score from there. So that was quite good. Um, I like the atmosphere. A lot of fans cheering, clapping. You can feel vibration here all the time. It's like if I'm watching the game, I can tell the vibration, the clapping. It's really good, I think it's a good experience so far. What are you hoping for in the second half? Four goals, it made better. Um, I think they need to, I think it's might need to change the way they play. They stop crossing the ball, it's, it's going nowhere. So I think I want to see a bit of better pop off it over this score. second half 
half super sub, Letiro Martinez came off the bench to equalise in the 77th minute before Robin Gosens put Inter 2-1 in front in the 83rd minute only to injure himself in the process of scoring the goal. Tiro Martinez captain man of the match performance by putting Inter 3-1 in front in the 90th minute and claiming a victory for the home team to keep them firmly in the chase for the Champions League places. Overall, a terrific game of football, particularly in the second half, where the game really came to life. And it was a fantastic atmosphere inside the San Siro. So what, what did you say the score was going to be before the game? 3-1. What did it finish up being? 3-1 now. So, just back to my prediction. They were losing 1-0, and then they just came back and three goals in the second half. Martinez came on, and it made a difference. He scored two goals, so... Even the result. That's worth it now. Give me. Happy days. Happy days, I. Really good game. Beautiful stadium, atmosphere, and the fans. It's just society. I didn't expect it to be like this, but massive. It's worth it to be here. Something that can happen. Something that can happen. So something that I didn't quite expect to see coming to uh, Como FC is that right next to the ground is like an air club, like an airport. And there's seaplanes that are landing on a strip in the sea, just literally just right outside the ground, which is uh, really kind of cool. Since four years there is uh, this uh, new uh, ownership of uh, the club that uh, is making us uh, to dream uh, in the big things because uh, it's a rich property and uh, they brought uh, uh, many many good players here uh, and uh, from uh, Serie D that is uh, fourth uh, uh, level of the Italian league. Now we are in Serie B and we know that probably we are going up uh, to the top level to Serie A and uh, also the city is now responding well uh, to, to, this, uh, to this new club uh, and uh, the stadium will be full today. It's a very tough situation because we are between the relegation and promotion zone. We all hope that we can make in the promotion zone but uh, it's a very tough uh, very tough because the Serie B this year is uh, so 
so competitive and uh, yeah, but we all hope we can promote to Serie A. Last uh, two years with uh, new players that come from uh, Premiership, uh, Premier League or uh, Serie A uh, gave us uh, a new important imp impact for uh, the people that uh, live in Como and uh, not only here but uh, from uh, the other countries that for example uh, from England, uh, from the United States uh, or Spain. Spain. In fact, in, the, in our stadium you can see a lot of people that uh, come here to see just Fabregas uh, or uh, Binks that come from England or uh, Kerrigan from uh, Ireland or... Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, we are a lot of, a lot of uh, foreign players foreign that players, uh, yeah. now also in, in Como there are many tourists from England, from UK, from, uh, from the US and now they just stopped to see the, the game and it was something that uh, some years ago didn't It's another happen. level. The promotion zone is okay. If you don't make it to Serie A, it's fine, but uh, the promotion zone is a very good uh, result for this year. <laughs> we just hope to win because it's uh, a game uh, uh, the opposite are uh, at uh, our level in the, in the rank, so it's an opportunity to be sure of uh, staying uh, in Serie B for uh, also next year, but also in the case of a positive uh, result also maybe to look, uh, to look ahead uh, to the playoff, but we will be we will be happy with, uh, to be safe uh, in advance. Inside the Stadio Giuseppe Sinigaglia. Palmero took the lead in the 17th minute through Alessio Bataro. The home side were awarded a penalty in the 32nd minute where Alberto Sieri stepped up to convert and equalise, making it all square at the break. St. Thomas? Um, well, to compare this from yesterday game, it's different, you know, the quality of the passing, long passing, short passing, movement, this is so far different. This is a bit of lower division, so I've noticed some recognise some player like uh, number 60 people, Homo, used people worries for now. You can see why he kind of dropped into lower division, but he wasn't that great. Um, it's 1-1, one, one. I think it's all right. I put it 1-1. One, one. So hopefully it stays out loud, for the sake of my pudding. But I want to see more go, I want a bit, bit more action to the game. I thought the Bowman team were a better team, yeah, they're passing, you can, see, you can see they've got a better quality in each players. But yeah, I enjoy, especially the viewers, I'm amazed, you know. It's an old classic stadium, and you can see mountain, you can see lake, and sometimes you can see flame going down. I enjoy that, more than the football game. So I want to see better from them, please. It's fair to say that after a bit of a disappointing first half, the second half didn't get any better with a lot of chances missed by both teams and the scoreline staying 1-1. In what was an entirely forgettable game, it was made much more memorable by the absolutely stunning surroundings that the stadium is located in. By far one of the most breathtaking football grounds that I think I've ever been to. 
and the atmosphere for both sets of fans was really lively throughout so definitely making it a worthwhile experience and making up for a bit of a lack of entertainment on the football field this particular game. Very good, uh, not, not, a, not, not a fantastic football. I think we're thinking about could have even beat them. Uh, yeah, they both had chance to win. Um, well, a really good chance to win and they blew it. So, very good. Oh, Despite a slightly lacklustre second game, it was a terrific weekend overall, checking out two new teams, two new grounds, mixing in some sightseeing with Italian football culture and living the dreams of those 90s kids that grew up watching Football Italia on TV.